finding an Apple IIc, and attempting to boot it up, this time on Hack 5. <laughs> everybody, welcome to this episode of Hack 5. My name is Shannon Morse, and today I'm super excited. I have a special guest here in studio. And what in the world is this? You found an Apple IIc. <laughs> I love this. So for everybody who is unfamiliar, uh, Rin is from Renoa Super Genius. It's a YouTube channel that I just discovered over the weekend over down in Maker Fair. So you found this at a junkyard? No, no, it was an electronics recycling center oh, that recycling speci center. specialized okay. just in e electronics. We'll need a video cable. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Wow, do you guys remember video these? Cable. It's a classic video cable. I, I used to have this for my Nintendos back in the day. So what is this? So this is actually an old internet connector from like the 1980s, like 82 or so. Oh my gosh. And they actually say Cisco Systems on the side. It's That's so cool. That's hilarious. So tell me a little bit of background uh, about yourself, Ren. Like you've you've been like finding old technology for years, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd say, so my family was very poor. Mm -hmm. And so I had a lot of fun finding stuff out of the trash and fixing it up. Well, that's kind of the hacker manifesto, though. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you find something that's old that somebody else has thrown out that seems useless, and you, you put it all back together, you clean it up, and you boot it up, and you make it do the thing. Exactly. So I, I kind of, one thing led to another, and I started a YouTube channel, and then the YouTube channel, I got my job at Apple, so I had a lot of experience with, like, managing labs and stuff yeah. like that, and that's why I got out here, because, well, if you're out here, you might as well look make friends with recycling center yeah, owners, of and then next thing I know, I'm taking home Apple Leases and 2Cs and <laughs> just so much fun stuff. So what, what can this thing do if, uh, if it boots up? <laughs> well, it can play Apple II games, and it can boot up. I had my mother go look through my uh, software collection and found a book and sent me a picture of a program. Ooh. So I have a almost like a 3D screensaver I can program it to do if we oh, get it to work. But we great. are lacking the power supply. Okay. Thankfully, it's just a simple DIN connector. Okay. I took the liberty of taking a power supply out of your computer. <laughs> and we'll need a few So I let Rin loose in the office and she was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna steal this power supply. Okay, thanks. So it's all right, I'll let you. I believe we can get by with just 12 volts. Is this gonna shock us? Nah, it's okay. Fine. It'll shock me. Um, It'll shock you. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> if you ever need to know how to get 12 volts out of a universal or an ATX power supply, yeah, it's always a good idea to take a paper clip and go from the green pin to the black pin. Oh no! And that automatically turns it on, and then you have 12 volts. However, some of the older ones they have difficulties if they don't have anything on the uh, five volt rail. So I recommend for that taking a hard drive or something just so it runs off of it. Probably gonna have to. Set this off till later. Okay. Probably want to clean this first. Yeah, I would say oh, so. Oh, that's interesting. So I haven't even had time to look at this thing yet. Made December 1986. Oh, and if you notice on the back of or the side of the apple, there's paused. Paused. <laughs> I, I don't know. Earlier I picked up a floppy drive with that on it, so huh. maybe from a computer group. So let's just test the monitor first. Okay. Before we start cleaning it up, make sure it actually yeah. co comes on. Works today. Tomorrow, question mark? Cross your fingers. <laughs> we have some power. Okay. And did it turn on? There's the power button. I'll let you do it. <gasps> oh, I heard I heard it! So it probably won't actually display anything. Yeah. Now I believe we could actually turn off the brightness enough to... Oh, yeah, we can see it. Ooh. <gasps> that then... is so cool! Yeah. Wow. So it looks like that might be dead. Might need a recapping. Yeah, looks so like it. So the old capacitors have a tendency to die in these, and every so often you have to get new ones. Okay. What do you do to replace the capacitors on the inside? Well, you, do you just have to resolder them back to a board. Well, when, uh, get new ones. No, you you can remove the back of it, which it looks like you can just do that with a couple of screws. Yeah. But since it's an Apple product, it's probably not that easy. And inside will be a circuit board, probably in the bottom here. Okay. Have a couple of capacitors and. Honestly, if the, the capacitors will most likely be very noticeable because they'll be kind of rupturing or stuff oh, coming out of them. Yeah, right. So you can take those out and replace them. Okay. As long as you get enough voltage and similar capacitance, like higher voltage is the better because it's like more it's rated yeah, for. Yeah. But it's always good to keep the capacitance like the microfarads around the same. And I don't know, they might even sell like someone probably sells a recap kit for this on eBay or something like that. Most likely. I would be surprised if there wasn't one. However, there is a chance that this is not actually faulty and this is just what it does when there's no video signal to sync up to. Maybe. 
So we know that this boots up, but whether or not the screen actually works is something that we're going to have to figure out once we plug everything in. But I think first we're going to get to clean in, right, Ren? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, this has a, <laughs> it's thick, a, little dirty. a thick layer of school it's, attic junk on it. It's pretty, ooh, yeah, that's gross. I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to organizing and cleaning. Marie Kondo, you my girl. So if anybody has any information about whatever this computer group was, paused? What was it on the yeah, side? Yeah, it's paused. I have, it has a little tree, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. This is a little computer group. Yeah, this is looking nice. Look at that. Yeah. It looks way better when it's not covered in a one inch layer of dust. You know, I think I actually lucked out. It's actually not that yellowed. Yeah, it's not. It looks quite good. If you ever it's have- age. If you ever have a computer that is yellowed, then you should take the plastic parts out because I believe it's the bromine coming out, which is a fire oh. retardant. And you don't need it anymore because it's, well, they had to do that because Apple doesn't want schools catching on fire. Yeah. But for your collection, like, whatever. Okay. So you can remove the bromine, the yellowing, by soaking it in hydrogen peroxide, just the, the regular grade you get from a drugstore. I didn't know that. And That's awesome. what I recommend is, so there's a rumor going on on the internet that you need to have it in ultraviolet light, like set it outside. That doesn't actually work. I actually did a test. So <laughs> I had a, a big Rubbermaid container okay. up on the top. I also had another one in my lab, a couple floors down, mm -hmm. and there was no difference. Really? Yeah, so having wow. ultraviolet light, it, okay. that, that kind of ruins that, cool. that myth. So you can just have this in your myth closet. Busted and get a rubber container filled with water. Yeah. Put like one or two of those big bottles of And dunk stuff. all the plastic bits in it. Yep. Cool. Don't have pure hydrogen peroxide because as most people don't know, pure hydrogen peroxide explodes. Okay, we found our power supply or a power cable. So we can actually plug in all the things now. Yay. So we have this. Yay. And because I shorted out the green pin and the black pin, it does turn on. Sweet. So now we have 12 <laughs> volts. That's awesome. Oh, it's across to here. Perfect. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just a DIN connector, which I believe is on there. Uh, Deutsches Institut für Norman? I'm not sure. It's some German company. Oh, I These see. These two pins are ground and those two pins are okay. 15 volts. I think we can get away with just jamming a few pa more paper clips in here. <laughs> might, might as well. <laughs> and this is a nice 12 volt rail, too, so that's good. I'm going to do them on different ones so they don't touch. That's a good idea. All possible. So what was it? Did I say power on the left? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we have that. Okay. Power's in there. All right. That's all plugged PSU in. PSU on, not shorting out. That's good, no smoke. There is this one. Sweet. <laughs> have that on in case it turns on. Okay. <gasps> oh, that was a good, that was a good noise. I heard I don't something. Know. I should have been given a ding though. Yeah, I didn't hear any dings. No I think Dang. this video just turned into a teardown. Let's go get some screwdrivers. All right. This up. Can't Sweet. get it to work. Look, look inside. So the tubes act as a big capacitor and they hold about 20,000 volts. Okay. And so the secret to shorting out a tube is a little jumper to a, per a screwdriver, hopefully a flathead, and then. Uh, okay. Underneath there is a little like rubber thing. You stick it underneath there. Yeah. You plug that into the ground and so you can short it out. Yay. This reminds me of a little old IBM monitor I found in the trash one time. No, no, it was at the recycling center, so I had to pay for it. A little IBM one? Cool. Yeah, it was a six inch black and white IBM one. It looked like one from a PS2 computer, but it was just tiny and cute. That's awesome. Unfortunately, I got broken on shipping. Aww. Yeah, well. I'll fix it. I'm just taking everything off. I love that these just use traditional Phillips heads. That's awesome. Unlike computers these days. I see inside of it. You can see in through here. Oh, yeah. Now, this is where we're going to be getting into some high voltage okay. things. So, yeah, for this, what you want to do is you just take some hydrogen peroxide, dunk it in there. But cool. although the inside looks kind of the same. Yeah. So I believe this entire piece will come off. Okay. Uh, no, there is a two screws inside here. They like putting screws inside the handles because no one's yeah. inside there. When you take something apart, if having the screw there does not hinder your further mm. disassembly, it's good to put them back. That's how I'm able to take apart big cameras and mm -hmm. not have too many problems. I think that 
That's all of them. Oh, this comes out first. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. That is actually really nice and serviceable. Well, let's just go and undo that. There's screws under that one, too. Oh, nice. oh, made in Korea. That's interesting. Okay, so you said there was one. There's one. Oh, there. right. You're right. Explain. You are correct. My years of building computers pays off. Okay. I found the screw. There it goes. Hello. Hi. Hello. There we go. Oh, okay. Once again, that's a piece of plastic that does not look all that bad. However, I think it would be nice to clean that up because there is some dust in there. Who's that? That's probably something to do with the manufacturer. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. So yeah, if you were going to be repairing this, yeah. you can see all the capacitors inside of there. Wow. And you would desolder them by removing this. Now, don't touch any of this if you don't have to because when I remove this, there's going to be a... Possibly a couple thousand volts, right? Yeah. especially on the flyback transformer. It's one nice thing about LCDs and LED screens. Yeah, so that's what's nice about LCDs is I believe, unless they have like a little fluorescent tube in them, some of the older ones have a little tiny fluorescent mm -hmm. tube, they um, much lower voltages. So the first computer that I remember being in my family was an IBM, I think it was a 386. Right. Or a clone. I think it was a clone. Because my dad built it. My first computer was struck by lightning. That's how I got it. It was struck by lightning? Yep. So someone lived on a hill, uh, some farmer. And wow. And it was struck by lightning. And it was a 1987 uh, Speary PC compatible. Didn't have a hard drive. But um, I got it working when I was eight. It was really fun. Wow. My dad helped me a little bit. but That's really cool. It was probably something simple like fixing the fuse. But... Hey, at like when you're a little kid, that's yeah, that's that's still pretty advanced. Yeah, so I'm happy about that. Of course that. it is. Yeah, he didn't really show me how to build computers until I was like eight or maybe nine yeah. or something like that. And then we built my first computer, which was so cool. So my dad was All right. sorry, the manager, oops, the manager of an, of an IT department mm -hmm. at a funeral printing company. And oh, then wow. my mom, she's also pretty smart with computers. When we lived in Switzerland, she actually worked for Nestle, converting, what? upgrading all their old computers from DOS to the Windows 3.1. Oh, that's that so, so cool. cool. <laughs> anyway, you can see the capacitors, although yeah. a lot of them look rather nice. Yeah, and they do. I don't have any reason to think that this monitor isn't dead because I believe that this is an analog monitor. Mm -hmm. And the reason the lines were all so messed up is because it doesn't have a signal. And so it's just kind of biding its time okay. while it's doing that. So if it got a signal, it might actually be okay. If not, so, I'll be doing a video on my channel of it. Oh, yeah, yeah I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're ever going to have to mm. work on a television like this, mm. take one of these and one of these. So now, because this has been on, yep. this ha is charged to several thousand volts. Okay. And so don't touch it. Get gloves. Get gloves. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay, well, if I get shot. I can make a Don't shock yourself. I think that was it. It's 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 quite a punch if you touch it. Yeah. But it's not that much. So that is that generates several thousand volts okay. and that makes a voltage difference which pulls the electrons to the grid on the front. If this is a color oh. screen, I'm not sure. Okay. Either way, it's magic and it has a lot of high voltage and so shorting out the ground to underneath that little suction cup can yeah. help you from killing yourself. That's awesome. Cool. Good to know in case I ever need to take apart an Apple IIc. Domain.com has all your website needs from .com and .net domains to intuitive website builders so you can take that first step in creating your online identity. Let me tell you, there's no domain extension like a .com or a .net or if you want to brand yourself, Domain.com has over 300 domain extensions like .club and .space. These guys are huge fans of Hack5. They're affordable, reliable. We've been using them for years. They've got all the tools you need to share your ideas with the world. And because they're such big fans, they are hooking you up with 15% off their already affordable prices. So get domain names and web hosting and email, and just be sure to use that coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. All right, so we've gotten everything cleaned off and we took this apart and noticed that it looks to be in very good shape on the inside. The computer might actually have some problems with it though, so let's also yeah, open that up. Yeah, it sounds like this one is probably having some issues. So how do we take this apart? 
Good question. Screws? Um, Screws. Yes. <laughs> you you have a lot of people that watch that program things for Linux, right? Yes, we do. Please, 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 could you please make a great video editor for Linux? <laughs> yeah. Just make it easy to handle. 60 yeah. FPS, 1080p, Just like, three channels of video yes. and audio. And give me a timeline and sequences. If there was a Kickstarter, I might be willing to give $3,000 towards this. Whoa. That's how serious I am. Wow. <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we missing? You know, I, I do reserve the right to take that back in case I like have money for something else. Okay. Because back home, I'm, I'm working on renting a factory, so. That's cool. For my rocket projects. Ooh. So in case I blow what? up. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. so glad we met. Yeah, so rocket I'm projects. <gasps> yeah. So this. Okay. Looks like it would actually hinge back. If it breaks, it breaks. There we go. Yeah. That capacitor could very well go. Yeah. The capacitor that kind of smooths out the signal going into yeah. it on the AC, they tend to uh, rupture and make really bad smell. Ooh. This is the mouse connector, but mm -hmm. that is one. Looks like an impact there. Yeah. Let's remove this floppy drive. I think I might have actually spares of these. Oh, does this move? Hey, look at that. Oh, nice. Let's, uh, easy. Oh. Oh, look at that. So, cool. easy to pop out. Awesome. Oh, what? there's all this stuff. Okay. But yeah, this is the computer, and it's, wow. full, it's fully backwards compatible to the Apple II, Apple II C, mm. or Apple II E. Apple II Plus, and I'm not even sure what other versions of the Apple II there were. Wow, look at that teardown. That is so cool. So we know that this was not booting up for yeah. some reason. What could be one of the issues with it? Not having the right power supply. That and that are connected yeah. together, so it's yeah. not a problem of those not, because I was afraid since there's two positive and two negative, yeah. I was afraid that I had to connect to both of them, like one would go to one power thing right. and one would yeah. go to another. Let's see what's in here. <laughs> might be, uh, I have no idea. Oh, it's an upgrade of some sort. Ooh. Interesting. Yes. Cool. Okay, so there was the thing. Oh, oh look at that. Look at it. So cool. Main logic. Cool. That's kind of cool. Okay. Made in Singapore. This way, get things from all over the place. Yeah. So yeah, that's. We're gonna leave it on for today. That is the inside of that, and go to my channel, Renault is Super Genius. Yes, the name is Sarcasm. It's a reference to <laughs> Wiley Coyote. A lot of people don't understand that. I they like it. So um, before you head out and head back home and figure out how to boot this thing up, which probably just needs a proper power supply, to be honest, because <laughs> it looks relatively good on mm -hmm. the inside. Um, but of course, looks can be deceiving. Sometimes something might be wrong, and it's not that easy to tell. So. Hopefully that's not the case with this, because I would love to see it booted up. So yeah, that is the Apple II C. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Ren. Thank you really very much. Really appreciate the teardown. I think it's awesome seeing the insides of some vintage technology. Yeah. Thank you everybody for watching. And of course you can follow her over on her channel. Links are in the show notes and you can check out everything that we are doing over on youtube.com slash hack5 and hack5.org. I'll see you next time. Trust your technolust. I am the master of the floppy drive. Puppy is. <laughs> Puppy is. I'm scared. Scared? I'm scared. You're scared. You're scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the tiny brown. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're so cute. <laughs>